Most people would assume that the worst disaster in British maritime history was the sinking of RMS Titanic. But unfortunately, that title would belong to the sinking of HMT Lancastria, which was bombed during the Second World War, killing an estimated four to 6,000 people. The number can only be estimated because no one really knows the exact number of people who were on the vessel at the time. Nevertheless, the tragedy would be one of the worst events in maritime history, but very few people actually know about it. The ship was constructed by the William Beardmore Shipbuilders of Glasgow, Scotland for the Kinnard Line. She was launched in 1922 and named Terenia, after the Tyrrhenian Sea off the coast of Italy. The ship had a length of 578 feet, or 176 meters, and a beam of 70 feet, which is just a little over 21 meters in width. With seven decks and a size of 16,247 gross register tons, RMS Terenia was built for the North Atlantic run, ferrying passengers from Liverpool to New York and back. She had a capacity of 1,300 passengers, separated into three classes, and held a crew of 300. In 1924, Cunard renamed the ship RMS Lancastria since passengers had difficulty pronouncing the name Terenia, and they reduced her to a two-class ship in order to improve the overall experience for the passengers. Lancastria continued her passenger run until 1932, when the Great Depression slowed down Atlantic travel. She was then put on duty as a cruise ship, taking people to the sightseeing waters of the Mediterranean and of Northern Europe. With the onset of World War II, Lancastria was requisitioned by the British Admiralty as a troop ship in March of 1940. Her hull was repainted a dull gray, and she became known as HMT Lancastria, an acronym for His Majesty's Troop Ship. She often transported troops from the UK to the European mainland. Soon after the events of Dunkirk, Lancastria was reassigned to Operation Ariel. She was sent to Saint-Nazaire, France to help evacuate both troops and citizens from the encroaching Axis forces. The captain of Lancastria was instructed to load as many people as possible and join a small convoy of troop ships protected by destroyers. Many reports agree that more than 5,000 passengers had boarded the vessel. Some say as many as 8,000 people got on the troop ship that day. Around 2 p.m., German bombers attacked the troop ship Oronse. Lancastria's captain decided that instead of setting sail immediately, he would wait until Oronse was repaired and a strong escort of destroyers would arrive. But just after 3 p.m., more bombers flew in and aimed their fury at Lancastria. The planes let loose a torrent of bombs. First Officer Harry Gradage described the scene. She bucked and shuddered like an animal in pain. One of the bombs had landed in a cargo hold carrying 800 Royal Air Force personnel. The ship quickly began to take on water. The men aboard rushed to help women and children out of the vessel. Chaos erupted aboard as the great vessel capsized in under 20 minutes. Survivors climbed up onto the hull of the ship waiting for assistance. Eyewitnesses reported that after a while, they began to sing in order to maintain morale. Private Tom Woods, writing to his girlfriend, later wife, in October 1940, described the devastation that followed. I dived into the water. It was very difficult to swim owing to the amount of oil in the water. He saw a small tugboat nearby. I made straight for it. After swimming for about three quarters of an hour, in which time I was asked to help a good many times, I was feeling tired. I thought I could not swim any further. My limbs were going stiff. I thought of home. I struggled and struggled until I managed to turn on my back. Then I could hear in the distance voices. I am hit. I am hit. I knew then we had been machine gunned. The destroyer escorts soon arrived and rescue operations began. There were 2,477 survivors, and they were not only troops, but also British and French civilians, innocent people such as women and children, and infants as well. However, most of the passengers aboard the vessel didn't make it. Many had died from the initial bombing. Others were trapped inside the ship as it was claimed by the sea. Fearing that the disaster might damage British morale, Winston Churchill issued a D-notice and had the information suppressed from publication. 
When this news came to me in the quiet cabinet room during the afternoon, Churchill recounted, I forbade his publication, saying the newspapers have got quite enough disaster for today at least. But on the 24th of July, the information leaked to the press. In the coming days and weeks, the bodies of the victims washed ashore and were buried in graves behind a nearby sea wall. The wreck remains in the waters off the coast, protected from recreational divers. On the 17th of June, 1988, a memorial was unveiled in St. Nazaire, honoring the more than 4,000 who lost their lives. The wreck still remains off the coast, and one of the last remaining artifacts of the ship is its original RMS Terenia Bell that now sits in St. Catherine Cree in London. The sinking of Lancastria is a disaster not often told, but it's one we should never forget. War is a violent, destructive act of power and human savagery. While many can chalk up such loss of human life to the inevitable brutality of war, let's not forget that war is not an external affliction to the human race. It is not an act of God like inclement weather or an earthquake. It is a concept we conceived, and one that we take part in. At least three times the amount of people died in the Lancastria sinking than did on Titanic. Innocent people's lives were sacrificed so our democratic countries can enjoy freedom. And it was a sacrifice made even by the small infants, held tightly by the fear-stricken mothers who watched the water rush in as Lancastria was consumed by the sea. Hey everyone, if you enjoy my content, consider supporting my channel by either signing up for my Patreon or my YouTube membership. This way, you can get exclusive perks in return. Now, in the future, I plan to take a trip to the UK aboard the Queen Mary 2 and film a lot of historic locations there so I can bring you all some new content. So if you'd like to see that happen as soon as possible, then you can support my trip by going to my GoFundMe page and donating to that. All the links that you need are in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.